Good evening, everybody. It's Cinephile Mike, and I am here today to review Max Walker Silverman's Little Indie A Love Song for day 22 of the 95 Days of Award Season posts. However, before I review the film, thank you to all of those who have voted in the poll for the live New Year's review. I'm not sure which film it's going to be. It seems to keep going back and forth between Todd Field's Tar and Darren Aronofsky's The Whale. So we will see. There's still about one more day left for voting. If interested, I will post the poll in the comment section of this review. Again, that review will be going live on January 1st at 1.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But for now, let's jump into a love song. This film is the story of Faye and her reunion with long-ago childhood sweetheart Lido. Our story takes place in the late summer, early fall of 2020. Faye, widowed for seven years, sends a letter to Lido, her childhood sweetheart, who is living a nomadic life since living his losing, I'm sorry, losing his own wife. She wants to meet with him and tells him that she will meet him at campground number seven, figuring lucky number seven, in the fields where they once went on a field trip when they were young children. So Faye camps out with her truck and her camper and waits for the day that Lita will arrive. Though she's not quite sure when it will be as she does not have a cell phone and waits for mail from Postman Sam who delivers the mail to the campgrounds via his trusty horse. While she waits, she has interactions with several different people including a family who looks to conduct some rather interesting business at campground number seven and a nice couple, Jan and Marie, who are contemplating whether or not to get engaged. Faye's days while waiting seem pretty routine with getting up, fishing, eating, and enjoying the two Audubon Society books she has with her that help her to fill the time. One being the Field Guide to North American Birds, and the other being the Field Guide to the Night Sky. Now as the film continues, once Lido arrives... The reunion is a tender moment, and we will see what happens when the two former childhood sweethearts, both widows, now can do. <laughs> this film is a very brief 80 minutes, and yet in it, it presents a masterclass in acting from Dale Dickey in the role of Faye. Dickey is a character actress with a resume of over 100 roles to her credit, but this is one of those chances where she is in the spotlight. For me, I was first introduced to her in Winter's Bone as the Harsh Mayrab. For those of you that saw Winter's Bone, you will remember her as the matriarch who belts Jennifer Lawrence across the face with a mug when she just won't mind her manners. In fact, many of the roles I've seen her do are more of these tougher facade roles. So to see her underplay and, you know, the whole less is more kind of thing where she plays Faye with such a sweetness and serenity that it's beautiful to behold. Even just the long shots of her as she contemplates the things in the campground and what's happening in her life, which are spectacularly captured by cinematographer Alfonso Herrera Salcedo, who makes the landscape a character in the film in as much of itself as the characters we meet. The scenery is such a sight to behold. And in that, Dickie holds the audience with us with simple looks, and she's often so soft-spoken at times, you actually want to lean in to hear what she's saying instead of wondering why she doesn't speak up. So as for its Oscar chances, now, I'm not sure they're going to be strong. This film is being reviewed because all of these posts are about award season films that have been nominated for some awards leading up to Oscars, but I am afraid that this is one of those beautiful indie films that may be overlooked. But I am thankful that the Independent Spirit Awards has recognized Dickie for her lead performance and that the film is nominated for the John Cassavetes Award. I'm just going to put it out there into the universe. Academy, if any of you see this, consider Dickie. Her performance is stellar. I give the film a very strong four out of five stars. A strong film with excellent performances, and if you would like to catch it, as of this post, you can rent or purchase it on most streaming platforms. Until then, I will see you tomorrow for day 23 of the 95 days of award season posts. We're almost at the 
33%, I'm sorry, the 25% marker. And until then, this is Cinephile Mike saying, take a break and watch something new.